Yes, here we are in the gallery with um, Stephen Albany, um, one of our, um, I suppose, uh, most treasured artists. Oh, treasured. Um, I don't think you and I have ever really had a proper conversation before, have we, Steve? We've spoken a lot, Tim, but maybe we haven't recorded Maybe we should have finally have a serious conversation. Maybe we haven't put it's it long on over the juice. record. Although some of our conversations I'd love to have been recorded. There are things I'm going to say to you that I just couldn't. <laughs> but I won't take this opportunity. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're here to talk about art and your art in particular. And um, really the, the odyssey of how I've known you for you know, basically more than 30 years. Mm -hmm. And um, we never thought we'd end up in a place like this where I had this gallery and Become, yeah, no, we were just kids when we met. We were, and, and now you're an established artist, and um, you've been able to traverse and you've crossed that bridge from design to being a serious artist. And um, I never thought the impact of that day when we were having Christmas lunch when I saw probably your first serious picture. Yeah, that I recreated it. Yeah, I started painting again. Mm. That's right. I remember that was a funny day. Um, Mm. I, I just, you know, with my history, you know, art school finished, um, Louise and I started working together, um, we created dinosaur designs, and from that, that was a whirlwind of, of exciting, creative energies that, that was, was fantastic for us. Um, it was a media that gave us an income, which Louise very cleverly um, knew that that's what we needed to do. I was leaving art school thinking oh, I'll support myself being an artist. Um, ha, you know, yeah. pipe dreams. Yeah. But, but you, you like that when you're young and it's, you're fearless and you just Well, there are very few them. artists that can survive on their art alone. No. In, in any country. You know, well, you look at the, the percentage of artists that practice art that can. Is so minimal. Even the great artists, very, very few have come out of art school and proceeded to, you know, basically earn a living. You continue with your art practice, but you need an income. And that's, that you can get the odd sale. Or see the teaching, or they find a sideline, and you found really, yeah, the side, you know, what was a sideline in dinosaur became, became the, you know, the huge. Well, that was so unexpected. That, that became the vehemence, but, yeah. but you, you kept drawing and you kept painting in the background. And finally, it's taken over that. Yeah, that inner voice said you went to art school for a reason. Mm. Um, don't lose the, don't lose the, the quest. Mm. And um, I started seriously painting again. And I remember I, I, I finally I created because when you have a bit of a gap, your visual language kind of drops away in terms of what I was painting. What was I painting about? What was, what was inspiring me? Why, why was I, you know? in that quiet moment and maybe it was you got to think about positives in that and it was a time to literally rethink the whole structure of what i was doing so um yeah i came back at it and it's it's almost like i didn't have a voice mm. you know my my um, my instrument was gone i couldn't so it was really i felt like i was starting again and i was painting um upstairs little studio at home and I was producing works that I just knew were total failures because I hated them, and and I did, I didn't I didn't I just wasn't loving it, but I just knew I had to push and keep push 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 through that. And I finally did a painting that I felt I felt good about, but I was so nervous in that I lost. I felt like I was losing my own judgment mm. in myself. I was being so self-critical that I was second guessing everything I was doing. And I finished this particular painting, the one you refer to, mm. and I remember I showed Louise, and Louise said, let's hang it in the living room, and that was, wow, okay, because everything... Well, that looked great with the turkey. Yes. You said, on Christmas Day. I don't And it took me back, and I remember saying, Steve, I think we're ready. I know, you, know? you saw that, and you were surprised. You said, oh, I didn't know you were painting. And I yeah. Said, I, yeah, and I said, well... You know, I hate to make money out of my family, but I thought, this is... A, <laughs> this is a, this a, I'm going to might have to break the rules here. Well, it was a great, it was a great opportunity, and when you said that to me, mm. it just gave me this oh, this real fire to to yeah, really no. get no, back well, that's to the thing. thing. I mean, I don't see, 
I don't look at your work in regard to um, it being something that, that, that is, is, is lucrative for my business. I looked at your work as something that would, uh, you know, enhances people's lives, mm -hmm. you know. Um, knowing you as a person and knowing that, you know, I remember seeing, always seeing those Victor passports on the wall. Oh, great. And see, see all these things, you know, you, you had a studio with John Coburn, you know, you had books on Matisse, you had books on, on De Stahl, you know, all these different artists that I saw passing you by and you come up with something which is not derivative, but, but somehow well, they're, 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 like, they're, like to, they're like totems to your emotions. Is that the best way to do? That's a really interesting way of putting it. And, mm -hmm. and they are very emotional, my paintings. Mm -hmm. They, although, you know, outwardly, I probably don't seem emotional. Of course, we're all human and we are thoroughly emotional. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to focus on positive. Uh, I like my work to feel that there's, a, there's, a, there's an energy and it's, it's a positive energy. It's, mm -hmm. it's about the good feelings that we have in life mm -hmm. because we can get dragged down by the negative, um, it's not as if that isn't part of my thinking and I'm not aware of that, but when it comes to my art practice, so far so good, you know, life has a way of, you know, dealing you blows, you know, knocking you down moments. I, I tend to not focus on that and bring it into my work. Mm. Um, what, I, what I look for, and so far so good, um, yeah, happy things in life, the positive mm. nature. And um, quite often my titles refer back to positive messages, um, you know, different single words or just, just that has a, yeah, good vibes. Mm. Mm. So, um, so anyway, you know, you, you know, one of, the, one of the difficult things about exporting Australian art is, um, you know, a lot of our art is steeped in landscape, you know, and, and a lot of people who have never been to Australia don't understand their life, they don't understand the structure. I mean, um, you know, John Olson talks about, you know, um, Australia sort of has the rhythms in its landscape like a dog, like a dog's hind leg. Yeah, you know, yeah, um, absolutely. You know, it's very difficult for people who haven't been here to understand the kind of, um, the incongruent beauty of Australia. Mm. Um, there's a congruency in your work which travels really well. And, um, Although they seem very simplistic, the comments I get back from people is, you know, we love our Steve Ormandy and we love coming home every night and we still keep looking at it. It seems so simple and so really very um, uncomplicated, but yet that we keep feeling a depth in it. Mm, you know, wow. um, I mean, it's, it's, do you believe that the ability to do that is really to do with your technique or is it to, is it to do with the fact that, you know, that, that you know, they it's having been in our little life that, that kind of um, gives that underpainting quality in regard to psych a, a psychological level, if you know what I mean. Yeah, no, that's that story that people continue to look mm. at because you can hang a work at home and you can stop looking. Mm. Sometimes, you know, and you, you look up and think, oh my God, there's that work again. Mm. But um, the landscape is a huge influence. I mean, all these things are distilled down, I think, when, when I'm drawing them you know, formulating the direction a painting's going to take, whether that is direct with a piece of chalk on the canvas or it's a pencil in my sketchbook. I guess you're exploring a visual language that talks to your interests, what, what inspires you. And of course, you know, the works of Picasso, the works of Matisse, you know, the colour palettes of Matisse, mm. but, the, but the graphic qualities of Picasso. Mm. Um, also, John Olson's graphic abilities as well, the way he lays out paintings, mm. the way he, he explores that, that space um, is a big influence. And also Coburn as well. Yeah. But uh, again, you distill all those things and you mm. come up with, hopefully, an independent voice. Mm. Um, because you feel like, you know, as an artist in this day and age, you do feel like a little weed trying to push up in amongst the fog, you know, like a little plant yeah. trying to get up through these tall trees and, and, mm. and hopefully people will start to hear your voice and you mm. can start to grow. Well, I don't feel as though, I mean, you were so patient, you know, I mean, you just suddenly appeared with these works, having been surrounded by all the artists we've known, let alone your father-in-law. But, um, but anyway, um, one of the things, you know, we talk about people 
I'm admiring art because they see technical complexity. Um, you know, the thing about your work is it looks easy, but mm. I know that well, having trained as an artist myself, it isn't easy. Any painter that yeah. makes you feel that's easy is doing something right. It's, yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, that's um, mm. that's the ultimate. Is is that simplicity is born of so much hard work. It's fascinating. Yeah. Like it, like a musician, like a you know a swimmer, you know. Look the way they glide up and down the pool in the Olympics. You think, God, they make it look so easy, but the work that's gone into that, yeah. that, that moment, that moment mm. when you step up to the canvas and you draw mm. those shapes and you build your language and you build the, the tonal qualities and colour and, and, and space. Mm. Yeah, it, you're making, it, I think it's because you've done so many laps mm. and that's what it's about. It's yeah. like, like everything. Um, you're also a musician. Um, does music relate to your art? Oh, music's a huge part of what I do. I, I'm, mm. I'm obsessed with it. You know, I, I have the, the classic art school, you know, playing in a band, going to art school, mm. wearing bowling shoes, you know, just, just op shop clothing. It was your classic art school fun times, you know, getting together with friends. You know, we were, we were making things for the Paddington markets on Friday night after a boozy dinner. And then we were making jewellery. We sometimes would work all night and go straight to the markets because you had to get up at six. So mm -hmm. I mean, when you're that age, why go to bed? <laughs> exactly. So exactly. So, yeah, we used to. Yeah, it was a really good times. And music continues to be a big part of, of what I do. Well, I, I feel as I listen to. I hear sound like in, like Anish Kapoor. You know, you well, hear like sounds when you look at his work. Yeah, paintings yeah. can be like chords, like, mm. like a beautiful chord. You know, mm. you hit an E chord on a guitar mm. and it just has this resonance. Yeah. And, you, you know, it's this deep resonance. And, and, and I think a painting can hopefully strike chords in people visually. They can feel all these elements coming together where colours are clashing, colours are talking, colours are loving, colours are hating, you know, mm. they're vibrating. And I think, yeah, I think work... Artwork, and that's why, as humans, I think we're fascinated mm. with with painting and artworks, especially mm. as they do that to us. Mm. Maybe it's like the, the artist hand strumming you like a guitar or, or playing the artist. Well, you, you create the psychological sounds from looking at the interactions of the you know the, the how the color how the color, how color and shape resonates. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, but anyway, um, you know, we can't talk forever, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to fit this into our um, technology, but um, but Steve, I'm I'm glad you and I finally straightened things out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, good to chat. It's been great to chat, and I'm, I'm glad that we hopefully um, uh, continue this wonderful meteorotic success. I think we should do that, and I hope that we keep growing together. So thank, thank you, Steve, and I'm sure we will. Thank you.